Oh, welcome to the old classic car channel and it is the Skoda 1200 and the 1201 which is the subject of today's classic brochure review. Now this is a little delicate this brochure but it's a fairly unusual because it's a UK market brochure for the Skoda of the sort of early mid 1950s. Now there is a little bit of confusion because the brochure itself, if you look throughout the brochure and on the back here at the specification page, it says the Skoda 1200. Now the Skoda 1200, just to give it a bit of background, was introduced in 1952 and continued until 1956. And it had a 1213cc engine and there was a saloon, a van and a five-door estate car version. Now, <clears throat> the 1200 had pop-up semaphore indicators in the front wings. But the cars featured in here don't have those. It has flashing indicators on the front. Now, a little research shows that the Skoda 1200 was replaced by the Skoda 1201 in 1954, and that continued in production until 1961. And the Skoda 1201 had flashing front indicators, which we'll see inside the brochure, and the slightly larger 1220, 1221cc engine, I think it was. And you can clearly see there are no pop-up trafficator semaphore type indicators let into the front wings. So it would appear that these slightly later cars, which technically are the Skoda 1201, were still being referred to in Skoda brochures as the Skoda 1200, at least in the UK for the UK market. So perhaps someone who knows their Skodas better than I do could just confirm that I'm on the right, on the right lines here. But I thought, well, it's an unusual brochure. It's probably quite unusual being a UK market English text brochure. So I thought it'd be worth having a quick look at here. So I think this is the 1954 to 1961 1201 version of the Skoda 1200. So let's have a quick look inside and just see what's going on. Now this, like I say, it's a little fragile, this first page, um, to the point where it's pretty much detached, actually. So... Uh, We'll just have a little looky here and just see what it says about this particular car. Now, it's not a car I've ever seen in this country before, so whether many were actually sold or not, I don't know. But the opening page gives the technical data of the uh, 1200 car, and it tells us there's a petrol four-stroke overhead valve engine, four-cylinder, 1221cc, which again is a sign that this is probably actually the 1201 rather than the 1200 and produced 36 brake horsepower and they had a water pump and bearing in mind that in the early 50s there were still quite a few cars around that had uh, thermo siphon cooling systems with no water pump and side valve engines and so on so this four stroke overhead valve water pump properly cooled engine um, synchro mesh on third and fourth it was reasonably well specified independent front suspension uh, rear uh, transverse semi-elliptic leaf spring hydraulic shock absorbers um, but it was probably quite a well specified car but I'm imagining that they were probably a little bit too unusual for a, a fairly conservative UK market so I doubt that many were sold here at all and 12 volt electrics because some of the cheaper cars for sale in this country were still on six uh, top speed of 65 miles an hour lowest speed in top gear 12 miles per hour and a climbing capacity in first gear of 32%. And the fuel consumption at steady 30 mile an hour was 35 miles per gallon. And there was a 7.7 gal gallon uh, fuel tank. So let's just go over to page 2 and just have a little look and see what Skoda had to say about their 1200 model. Every detail of the Skoda 1200 reflects the 50 years of experience and technical development. It is a successful concentration of all the qualities which an exacting motorist requires from a modern car. The latest model Skoda 1200 offers you increased power and speed, improved comfort and safety, better acceleration, reduced specific consumption, perfect suspension, easy handling, faultless stability in bends, graceful and spacious body with reduced air resistance and good view, well appointed interior, comfortable seats, silent driving, in short many pleasant miles and a quality car with tradition. So I think there's an element of a translation going on here, probably from the, the original Czechoslovakian brochure, but as you can see these were the front flashing indicators of the 1201 version and uh, you can't really see here but you can see there are elements of this 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 
part of the body here particularly reminds me of the Saab 96 and the 93 uh, quite thick windscreen pillars uh, I'm not sure if that's I think it's a V windscreen yeah there's a you can just about see the divider there but very thick windscreen pillars quite raked back uh, pillars as well so it's quite a wind cheating design and they do refer to that uh, <coughs> like I say with reduced air resistance and a good view out So yeah, so it's quite a streamlined design really, I was on cross-ply tyres back in the day, left-hand drive, so no UK photographs here, these were all from the original brochure I imagine, so let's carry on. If anyone's got one of these cars in this country, it'd be great to read about it in the comments, because like I say, I've never seen one. I don't know how popular these are, whether they're well preserved, I don't know. Do many people collect the Skoda 1200? I'd be interested to know. So we've got some more information here which I'll have a look at. There's a photograph over here showing the side view and showing the quite stylish sleek lines of the, uh, the 1200 model. And I think it's quite nice. Do these door handles pop out when you press them? It looks like it. They look like they're flush mounted which is quite a nice little, little feature. So let's just go over here. It's a shame the brochure's not in better condition but it just popped up somewhere and I thought that's quite nice. A dream of a car come true, the Skoda 1200 sedan. It is an outstandingly graceful model with perfect comfort and minimum requirements as to consumption and maintenance. It will accommodate easily four to five people at more than 60 miles per hour and have a maximum consumption of 30 miles per gallon. The very spacious interior contributes to the comfort of all passengers. The front seat can be comfortably adjusted to its most favourable position even when driving. And the rubberized horsehair padding mounted on top of a coil spring mattress makes the seats and backrests softly cushioned. A further improvement of the famous independent springing of all wheels assures increased comfort. The interior is efficiently ventilated by two pairs of ventilating panels which can be set in various positions either to bring the air in or to exhaust it. Besides, there are two vents in the body bringing fresh air to the lower part of the interior. This system has proved itself even in tropical climate. It is a pleasure to drive and refreshing to travel in. The car has a very flexible and quiet engine. The gearbox with steering column gear change has four speeds. The second, third and fourth noiseless, third and fourth synchromesh. The suitably selected gear ratios enable to make full use of the engine power on the flat as well as in hills. Owing to the efficient hydraulic brakes, the car can be stopped quickly and safely from full speed without skidding or blocking of wheels. It has lightning acceleration, is easily handled and holds the road perfectly at top speed and in bends. The stability of the car is exceptional due to special stabilising stays on the front axle. Every detail perfectly planned. The instrument panel is of original shape, designed with taste and all the instruments arranged to purpose. And we carry on and see what the interior itself looks like. And a very stylish 1950s car dashboard. It reminds me very much of the Volvo 444 that I had until not very long ago. Lovely white steering wheel. You've got clear instrumentation. There's the ignition switch, I suspect. Or is that the light switch? Someone will know. Various other controls grouped in the middle here, but quite an attractive dash. Obviously, there's the V, the split windscreen. The brochure refers to speedometer, petrol gauge, water thermometer, ashtray, and electric cigar lighter. None of these cigarette lighters here then. The battery charging, oil pressure, headlamp full beam and direction indicator telltale lights are located in the speedometer. The intensity of the instrument panel light can be regulated, a bit like the Volvo again. The roomy glove compartment is filled with a lid, fitted with a lid forming an integral part of the dashboard. The two arm steering wheel feels well in your hands and does not obstruct the view of the instruments. And we've got a few comments about the luggage space. Let's go over the page and see what we have here. Small improvements of great importance. So again, they're talking about an updated car, which makes me think this is the 1201, the slightly updated version of the 1200. Small improvements of great importance. Increased heater efficiency, enlarged hot air inlet to the windscreen. Winking direction indicators front and rear with electromagnetic contact breaker and sound signalling. Bonnet lock control inside the car. New exhaust silences of increased efficiency. An increased clutch lever ratio giving a gentle engagement and a flowing start. 
And here we have a chap loading up his Skoda with uh, various suitcases. Uh, this was the first Skoda with an all-steel body as well, something which they were very proud of. And even if you go and look at the Skoda Heritage website now, they, you know, they're obviously very proud that this was their first monocoque all-steel car. Uh, you could buy a van version and you can also have a five-door estate. Uh, but I think it's only the saloons that feature in this particular brochure, so maybe... Maybe we only got the saloon in this country. I don't know. Coachwork of the Skoda 1200. It is designed well and with taste, combining requirements of graceful lines with a favourable streamlined shape and maximum interior space. It offers perfect safety. It is all steel integral shell construction, guaranteeing strength and durability. The wide inclined V-type windscreen, together with a large rear window, gives perfect view to all sides. Four wide doors opening in the direction of travel are perfectly sealed to prevent dust and water entering the interior. And we've got some details here about the insulating material, the carpets, the floor coverings, etc. and ventilation. And over here we have an underbonnet view of the 1200cc or 1221cc four-cylinder engine. Uh, the engine is a four-cylinder overhead valve, capacity 1221cc, and it gives four brake horsepower more than the engine of the previous model. 36 brake horsepower at the same petrol consumption. 33 miles per gallon. Almost quadratic cylinders, 72 by 75, with a well-designed compression space and short, correctly preheated inlet manifold of large diameter. This all is in harmony with the latest technical development. Wet cylinder liners of special tempered casting of exceptional hardness and wear resistance are used. Even after long use, it is not necessary to regrind cylinders. To replace the liners will suffice. So you've got replaceable uh, cylinder liners. Water cooling with thermostat and bypass assisted by a water pump and fan is very efficient, even in the most difficult climatic and terrain conditions. The finned bottom of the crankcase assures good cooling of the oil. As we can clearly see, the underbonnet space is quite nicely laid out. You've got a fuel tank up here on the bulkhead, right next to the battery. So you wouldn't want any vapours from here and sparks from here. Uh, and obviously we've got the four cylinder engine, nice and easy to get all the spark plugs. They're just on the side there. Got the air cleaner there, a big tall radiator. So everything's nice and accessible, quite easy to get at. You've got a rear hinged bonnet with a very substantial looking stay. So uh, hopefully you wouldn't crack your head as you were working under the bonnet. Yeah, I know my Austin Dev now had a very similar shape at the front with the, the rear hinge bonnet and it was quite easy to clobber your head on the bottom of the bonnet that was about there. So, it's a little delicate this particular brochure. On the rear page, just get it all straight, we have some information on two other models in the Skoda 1200 range, the 1200 utility cars. The Skoda 1200 delivery van, an all-service vehicle, it represents well, meets all requirements as to smartness and purpose and is a paying proposition. It will take a good deal of load, will easily weave its way through city traffic and its parking is no problem. Offers comfort to driver and mate, has a big loading space of a carrying capacity of £1,100. A partition divides the interior of the body in the driver's compartment and the goods compartment. The overall length 14 foot 3 and 5 eighths inches. At least they've converted all the dimensions into an Imperial. And then we have the station wagon. Two cars in one. It obviously shares the same silhouette as the van, but with added windows and seats. The station wagon will serve as a fast and profitable delivery van. It has a smart body with big loading space. At any time it can be converted into a passenger car, seating comfortably four to five people. And there'll, be still there'll still be a large space for luggage. The goods compartment is accessible by a wide single leaf door at the rear, the payload £1,100 and two people or £770 and four people. And again, same 14 foot 3 and 5 8 inches their length. And then a final note on this particular brochure. Beside these models an ambulance with two stretchers equipped with a paint and tint releasing arrangement of the top stretcher is available. In emergency cases it can be converted to three stretchers. A very, very flexible platform. So, like I say, the updated 1201, which is what this brochure is for, I think, was produced from 1954 to 1961 and presumably was on sale in this country. But, like I say, it'd be interesting to know just how popular they were or weren't in the UK. 
So that was the brochure for the Skoda 1200 in the revised 1201 form. I hope that was of interest. It's not a car I've ever seen in this country or any other country, come to think of it. But I thought that might just be of interest just to show the type of cars that our car makers in the 1950s were up against um, when you sort of looked a little bit further afield. So I hope that was of interest. Please uh, like this video and subscribe to the channel if your classic car content is your thing and you'd like to be notified of future uploads. So that was the Skoda 1200. Thanks for watching and more videos very soon. Bye bye.